We'll uh, we'll hear from Darren Till right now on the TSN MMA show. He talks about the fight with Woodley and uh, the bigger fight that he discusses uh, in this uh, in this interview. And I should add, as always, Darren Till uses some colorful language in this interview. So if you're offended by anything like that, feel free to shut it off. Here he is, Darren Till on the TSN MMA show. He has had one of the most meteoric rises to a title shot. The crazy thing is, after his second win over Jessen Ayari in the UFC just over a year ago, he said, mark my words, I will be a champion. Darren, are you even surprised at how quickly this has come together for you? Yeah, I'm a little surprised. It, it, it has been a, a fast rise. Uh, I expected it to be, you know, prolonged a little longer. But, you know, when you believe you're the best, you're ready for any time, you know, any place. Uh, when the opportunity comes knocking, and, and that's what's happened now. So in two weeks, that, that opportunity will, will present itself. One person that a lot of people say is the best ever is John Jones. I know he's had some issues that have kept him out of the octagon for some time, but um, he needed seven fights before he got a title shot. You've only needed six. Um, do you feel like the sky's the limit with you in terms of your upside and where you're viewed in, in I guess, the, the, the big picture of this sport? Yeah, the, the, the sky is definitely the limit for, any, for anyone always. You know, if you believe in and you put a, enough work in it, there's no secret. It's all just about hard work and belief. Uh, I do definitely agree. John Jones is one of the best to, have, to ever have done it. Uh, I, I just think with the right people, the right mindset, you, you know, the right person. You know, I, I feel like I'm a spe- I feel like I'm the person to do it. I feel like I'm that special person. Uh, no one can tell me any different. So, you know, I, I know in two weeks, I know in two years, I know in four or five years, I, I'm going to be considered one of the greatest fighters of all time. As I mentioned, you said this after your second UFC win. How long have you carried this sort of confidence uh, about greatness with you? All my life. All my life. I, I'm not second best to anyone. I don't want to be second best to anyone. I don't want. I don't want to be to, to be any questions. I just want to put me hard work in, you know, and I just, uh, I, there's never been a plan B, it's just plan A, and plan A is to just be the fucking best in MMA, it, that confidence has been with me since I've been a child, since I've ever started this shit. So you're you're 10 years old, let's say, in Liverpool, you're going up, do you still yeah. have that kind of confidence in you where you're like, I'm I'm destined for greatness? Yeah, I knew it, I knew it as soon as I entered the gym, I knew it as soon as I got me, took me first punch. I knew, it, I knew it as soon as I gave my first punch. I knew it as soon as my first fight. I just knew it. I just knew there was something inside me. I knew I was different from the rest. I just knew that. Sometimes we, 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 we know the, know things like this inside of us, and I know it to be true. I, I just know it 100%. This is your first pay-per-view fight, your first UFC fight in North America even. Uh, why do you think that the UFC is betting on you so early, and is that what it feels like to you, that they're betting on Darren Till to, to be a great, a great star in the sport? I think they're just helping me helping me out with, with, with what I say you know they, they they believe what I'm saying as well I, you know I, I don't know what they're doing I don't really care I, I, I don't care who they put in front of me I don't care what they do I don't care if someone says they're helping me or they're not helping me whoever I fight I will beat uh, you know I, I'm happy for all the support they're giving me but right now the opportunities came and in two weeks that's it that that there's nothing else left that I can do. If I lose that fight on that night, it's because Tyron was the better man. How real does it feel to you right now? The fight's just over a week away. You're fighting for the championship. Does it feel like just any other fight to you, or, or does the gravity of the situation stick with you? I just can't wait to fight. I don't. I I couldn't care if it was on Fight Pass or pay per view, or if it was in if it was in the back of a, a bar in a little cage. I just I'm just so ready right now at this point at this moment, just to fight. I just can't wait to fight. I've done everything I can do. I just want to fight right now. Well, you mentioned you don't care where, where it is. You have mentioned that you do have dreams of fighting at Anfield. Um, I recently wrote uh, on social media that if Connor ends up beating Khabib, you end up becoming the welterweight champion. A, a super fight could be created between the two of you on you know British soil or European soil, whether it's Croke Park, Wembley, Anfield. Is that something that you could envision? Something that big for European fans? Uh, it could happen, but uh, Connor's on a different path. I, I'm not. I'm not really interested in Connor. I, I, I'm not like, 
that the rest of these guys who, who want to call for that money fight, call for that Connor fight. If it happens, yeah, it'll happen. But right now, Connor's got got a big test, you know, ahead of him. I believe he's gonna win. If in two years or something that happens, it happens. But right now, Connor's a lightweight. I'm a middleweight, so you know, it's it's just not something that's even in my mind. You say that you're a middleweight. Two years down the line, do you think you're still going to be the welterweight champion, or, or do you think you're just destined for bigger things in other divisions after you're done no, defending the title? I've got a few more fights at welterweight. I've got a few more bits of business to take care of at this weight, and then I'm moving off. That, that's my that's my plan. Who are those bits of business? Tyron Woodley, <laughs> <laughs> and then who, and then whoever comes after him. I've told I've told you, fucking everyone and everyone. People keep asking you about this weight cut. I'm not going to ask you about it, but I do want to find. I do want to find out how much you you actually talk about it behind the scenes with your team. Is it? I don't think it's a concern. I'd imagine you've made the weight in the past. You've you've missed it um, on whatever two different occasions, but you know that you can make the weight. Do you guys talk about it at all? Is being at the UFC PI something that that brings that to the forefront because you're you're doing it differently this time around? Uh, I, I my weight my weight my weight is the fight uh, the fight itself. That that's fun time. That's that's easy. You know, my big my big fight is with the weight. So yeah, constantly every day we check weight. We we talk about weight. We we're talking about what what right foods we we can have and and stuff like that. So yeah, weight, weight's a big part of this camp. So what's left to do? What does the next uh, ten days of the life of Darren Till look like? Just <laughs> walk around moody because I haven't got food in me and just <laughs> wait to make weight. Have some nice food and then and, and then it's go time. It's it's time to go and win a world title. That's what that's what that's what I, I want to do. Was well, that nerve wracking? I mean, you say that the weight is the battle. If right now you have to just think about it for for this many days in a row. People are going to be asking you about it and all of that. Uh, yeah. Does that feel like the bigger fight? Yeah, it's always my bigger fight. I'm a big guy. I, you know, I train hard. I, I eat right, and I have a big cut. And yeah, that's my fight. I don't really even think about the fight with Tyron. Everyone asks about that, but my weight's the fight. So yeah, I'll just. Uh, Keep answering these questions until I make weight, and then everyone can get told to fuck right off. <laughs> <laughs> but how much of a game changer has the UFC PI been for you? Is this somewhere you hope to visit more frequently uh, before your fights? Yeah, it's it's been good. It's uh, it's just got everything under one roof. There's so many guys here helping out. There's recovery. There's food. You know, the the the, the facilities. Are just I, I can't. You know, I, it's just. Honestly, I kind of put it into it. It's unbelievable being here, especially with my team. It's everything's under one roof. I, you know, right now I'm having a few moody days, but I'm I've been so happy to have been training here. It's just it's been such a big honor for, from how far I've come. I'm, I'm so honored to to be here. How are you enjoying just being in Las Vegas and, li- and living there? Where 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 are you living right now? Yeah, I'm living about ten minutes from the institute, so it's nice. We got a big house. There's a pool, you know, a little pool table on that. Uh, big rooms, you know, it's chilled. We we get back home, we watch some films, and, and we just chill out all together. We're, we're like one big family at, at the moment. It's 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 good vibes. It's there's good energy coming from the team. Do you like that? Do you, I mean, I'm sure in Liverpool, you go everybody goes back to their own quarters before a, a fight. Now you guys are all together as a team. Do you like that as a kind of a team building exercise? Yeah, it's just nice. Yeah, team building, family building. You know, we're all just we're finding out new stuff about new things about each other. So. Yeah, every now and then it's nice to just spend quality time with people like that instead of just in the gym. So, yeah, it's nice. It's eye-opening. Uh, people talk about comparisons with you and Connor, but let me know if you think this is accurate. Connor uses his confidence to kind of, you know, go after his opponents, kind of take them down verbally, use mental warfare. You use your confidence to build up your belief in yourself. You're not, you're not all about putting down your opponents other than saying that, you know, you have the unshakable belief that you're going to beat them. Do you, do you think that that's accurate? I I don't need to uh, put them down. I, my energy alone will put them down. My presence, the the belief they see in me will put them down. If a guy wants to talk shit, yeah, I'll talk shit back. But uh, I, I just fucking I just go about things as I go about. You know, it's just my confidence is unmatched. There's not a man alive right now on this earth who is more confident than me, and that's the truth. I I I, I just beg to differ with anyone who says they're more confident with me. So that that's how I look at it. 
Well, I think that the proof is in the pudding there. You look back at your post-fight interviews from past years and, and your affirmation that you are going to be the best, that you want to win three titles. You've been talking about it for, you know, for more than a year. Um, and uh, that certainly is apparent. And it seems like uh, it's manifest, dynasty, uh, de- sorry, manifest destiny right now. You've got your title shot in just over a week's time. Um, and uh, I'm sure you're, you're greatly looking forward to that. And uh, we look forward to seeing you compete at UFC 228. I'm, I'll see you down there in Dallas. And uh, we look forward to uh, covering an exciting fight week. Thank you, mate. I'll see you there. Have a good day. That was Darren Till. Wow, that, that, if that doesn't whet your appetite for a main event for <laughs> UFC 228, uh, I don't know what will. And I asked him about fighting Conor McGregor, and he goes, I'm not interested in fighting Conor. Conor's got his own stuff going on. I'm a middleweight. He's a lightweight. I'm not one of these guys that's going to try to call out Conor to make money. I've got other guys in the middleweight, yeah. in the welterweight division that I need to beat first. How, how crazy is that? Yeah, he's going to talk his way to his own big money fights. Exactly. You know I mean? think that's kind of his mindset. That's his got mindset. Bigger fish to fry. And, I mean, if you ask a top guy that's so focused in the sport, they're going to say when you compare them, they're always going to say, I'm not that person, you know? I mean, we saw it with Israel Adesanya. They're like, oh, you know, you're the, just, you're the next John Jones. He's like, no, I'm, next I'm, Israel I'm the next Israel yeah. Adesanya. So, I mean, Darren Till has that mindset. He's not going to sit there and try to – create this path that someone else took. He's going to create his own. And look what he's done in this such small amount of time. You know, you give him another couple of years, man, he might be that megastar that the UFC needs and is looking for. For sure. Uh, I started watching The Ultimate Fighter. It's uh, you got two heavyweights from Glory on on there. You yeah. Got, uh, Anderson Silva, not to be confused with the other Anderson yeah. Silva. I didn't know Anderson he was Zoss on that Silva. one. Yeah, he's on the show. Anderson Brodick Silva? Yeah, Brodick Silva, yeah. He's I didn't on the show. know he made the show. I know yeah. Maurice Green. And Maurice Green. He's yeah. on the show as well. The I feel like there was another boss. kickboxer. One sec. I'm going to go and take a look. I feel like there was another guy from Glory on the... But I didn't know Braddock fighter. made it. That's pretty exciting. Yeah, he made That's it. That's my guy. Yeah, Braddock made it. And uh, he's, got a good, he's got a good UFC record. 